Whilst humanity enjoys abundant food, clean water, major health benefits and engineering and artistic inspiration, all thanks to nature, we are nonetheless placing unprecedented pressures on the ecosystems and beings that we ultimately depend on. Scientists predict that between one third and one half of all species will face extinction by the end of this century. Those species still remaining are dwindling. Vertebrate species have already declined by an average of 70% in the last half century. Biodiversity loss is driven by a number of factors. The drivers with the largest impact are changes in land and sea use, direct exploitation of organisms and climate change. Changes in land and sea use include agriculture expansion and human infrastructure and development and can cause direct habitat loss and reduce genetic diversity. The use of herbicides and pesticides in agriculture, for example, can remove nutrients and organisms from healthy soils, reducing their ability to provide beneficial ecosystem services. The expansion of infrastructure has caused the loss of areas of forest, wetland, and other important ecosystems globally. This reduction of available habitat leads directly to a loss of species. Direct exploitation of organisms include deforestation for logging and other materials, and hunting and overfishing. Overfishing is causing an unbalancing of the food web in the ocean, not only threatening species such as tuna and halibut, but also the species that depend on them, such as dolphins and sharks. Many land species have already gone extinct due to hunting, such as the tarpon and aurochs in Europe, and species like rhinos and tigers face the same fate. The increased frequency and intensity of extreme weather events that cause fires, floods and droughts, coupled with large-scale climate change and sea level rise, has led to widespread impacts to biodiversity. Some species have adapted their ranges with the temperature, but some cannot adapt in time. Some have lost vital habitat and food sources, and some have had to deal with new emerging diseases and living closer to humans. The way to remedy these issues is clear. More priority must be given to nature. However, the way this is achieved is more difficult. The recently published Dasgupta Review offers one avenue through the inclusion of nature in economic appraisals. Natural capital is the economic value provided by these ecosystem services previously discussed. For instance, Worldwide insect population was valued at $217 billion, with around 20 farmers per nest required to manually pollinate fruit trees in areas where bees have been eradicated. This concept allows policymakers and others to measure the true impact of projects they create. One suggestion is rewilding. This allows land to be returned to its natural, uncultivated state. One prime example of this is the Nef estate in Sussex. The abandonment of farming alongside the introduction of longhorn cattle, Exmoor ponies, Tamworth pigs and various deer to mimic the UK's historical unaltered ecosystem has led to major jumps in biodiversity, with species such as nightingales, turtle doves, and purple emperor butterflies booming in numbers. In this vein, the UK government has pledged to increase the amount of protected land in the UK to 30% by 2030. They have also committed to a domestic target to protect 30% by 2030 in UK waters. Similarly, the government, alongside 57 other states, have joined the Global Ocean Alliance, pledging to protect 30% of the global ocean by 2030. Finally, the Environment Bill promises to deliver the most ambitious environmental program of any country on Earth, including to crack down on water companies that discharge sewage into rivers, and will include a world-leading, legally binding species target for 2030, aiming to halt the decline of nature and to protect beloved British animals. Perhaps the most important step will be taken in the coming months, at the 15th Conference of the Parties to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity, also known as COP15 or the Biodiversity COP. There, countries from around the world will set new global biodiversity goals and targets for the next decade. These goals and targets will drive the global and national effort to reverse biodiversity loss and reset our relationship with nature. To recap, these benefits are under threat due to human activity impacting wildlife through habitat loss, overexploitation, and climate change. In order to save nature and thereby ourselves, we must do more to protect biodiversity at home and globally and reset our relationship with nature.